Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Mashiach, for it is the power of Elohim unto salvation to everyone that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a person that have a, a heart that's faint, you probably want to change channels now, ladies and gentlemen. This broadcast will not be for you. This broadcast is dedicated, ladies and gentlemen, and devoted to those that love truth. If you are a lover of the truth and if you seek truth, well, ladies and gentlemen, this broadcast is tailored made for you. We bring the truth raw and uncut, ladies and gentlemen. We don't apologize for speaking the truth. We don't chase rabbits. We don't beat around the bush. We let the chips fall where they may, ladies and gentlemen. So we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us uh, once again, amen, for another word from Yahweh. Well, we're going to get right into... Um, our broadcast this evening. Christians emerge as key patrons for Jews moving to Israel. Israel's founding fathers who etched a commitment to encouraging Jewish immigration into the Declaration of Independence might be surprised to find that seven decades later, the state of Israel is relying on Christians to fulfill that promise, what was once a strictly Jewish funded mission is increasingly being bank bankrolled by evangelical Christians. Israel's Christian allies now fund about a third of all immigrants moving to the country of Israel. According to a tally by the Associate Press, the figures reflect that ever-tightening relationship between Israel and its evangelical Christian allies whom Israel has come to count on for everything from political support to tourism dollars. Evangelicals communities have become increasingly important for Jews. Israeli charities raise tens of millions of dollars from Christians around the world and evangelical Christians make up 15% of all tourists to Israel. A parliamentary caucus works with evangelical uh, legislators around the world to foster support for Israel. Israelis can also thank white evangelicals for helping put former President Donald Trump, an ardent supporter of Israel nationalist government, and the White House. Israel has no better friends, I mean that no better friends in the world than the Christian community around the world. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told a Christian media summit in Jerusalem last year. Of the more than 28,000 Jews who immigrated to Israel in 2017, at least 8,500 arrived thanks to Zionist Christians. 
donations according to the official figures and numbers provided by the Fellowship and Jerusalem International. Christian em Embassy, another prominent group that raised money from evangelicals, the Jewish agency receives additional undisclosed funds from other Christian donors, meaning that that share could be even higher. Liberal Jews who make up the majority of the American Jewish community bristle at the evangelical ties to the political right and their support for Israel settlement enterprise in the West Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, evangelical Christians, Zionist Christians, have a lot of clout and influence in the politics there in Israel. They pump tens of millions of dollars, ladies and gentlemen, into the Jewish state there in Israel, ladies and gentlemen. And so Israel depends heavily on uh, evangelical Christians, ladies and gentlemen, for financial support, ladies and gentlemen. Christians love the state of Israel. They love the Jewish people. They would bend over backwards for these people, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And Israel depend on evangelical Christians uh, for financial support. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, said that uh, uh, the evangelical Christians are the closest friends to Israel, ladies and gentlemen. A majority sticking point in Israeli-Palestinian conflict, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, building of uh, settlements there, the expansion of settlements, ladies and gentlemen. That is a major hindrance for the peace there in Israel. But Christians support the building and expanding of Jewish settlements in the West Bank on Palestinian land, land that they stole. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what's causing, amen, the conflict there in Israel today, ladies and gentlemen, the, the expanding of settlements. They are expanding settlements there in Israel on Palestinian lands, ladies and gentlemen. This is a major sticking point in Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Not everyone is pleased. Some in Israel are suspicious that the evangelicals embrace stem from a belief that the modern Jewish state is a precursor to the apocalypse of apocalypse when the Messiah will return and Jews will either accept Christianity or die. Jeremy Ben Ami, president of J Street, a liberal pro-Israel group in Washington, D.C. He said the Jewish community should be weary of taking help from Christians who are playing with our lives to further their own religious ideological purposes. Evangelical Christianity is one of the fastest growing religious movements, making up more than a third of the world's estimated 2 billion Christian evangelicals. Ladies and gentlemen, there are, amen, over 2 billion Christians today, and at least a third of them are evangelicals, ladies and gentlemen. Evangelicals and Israel has an affinity, ladies and gentlemen. Christianity and Jews, ladies and gentlemen, today um, believe, well, the Christians believe their root, they have roots, ladies and gentlemen, from Israel. Most view Israel establishment as fulfilling biblical prophecy, ushering in 
an anticipated messianic age. Jews also believe in a future messianic age, but do not believe Yahushua is the Messiah, ladies and gentlemen. So a lot of this support from um, evangelical Christians or fundamentalist Christians today, ladies and gentlemen, comes because they believe that these Jewish people, these European Jews, ladies and gentlemen, that migrated to the land of Israel uh, are fulfilling Bible prophecy. They believe that Yahweh gave the land to these European Jews. Yahweh did not give the land to European Jews, ladies and gentlemen. He gave the land to the Israelites. And these people, the majority of the people in the land of Israel today, they are not, ladies and gentlemen, descendants of ancient Israelites. They are not the descendants of ancient Israelites. They are Gentile. Uh, matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, they are Europeans and they are indigenous people. Their ancestors were indigenous people from southwest Russia uh, uh, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, ladies and gentlemen, in that region of the world, the, the Khazars. So this is where these people are from. And in the 8th century, ladies and gentlemen, their uh, ancestors converted to uh, Judaism. They converted to Judaism. But these people are not Israelites. They are not uh, descendants of Israelites, of ancient Israelites of the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. These people are European Jews, and their ancestors were proselytes. They converted uh, to Judaism, ladies and gentlemen. And so this is why these people keep all uh, Jewish customs and they've converted to Judaism, what have you, ladies and gentlemen. They changed their names from European names to um, Israelite names. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, they are proselytes. They are, pro they are not descendants of ancient Israelites, these Ashkenazi Sephardic Jews. Matter of fact, in the book of Genesis chapter 10, we see um, Gomer, Gomer's, a man of uh, lineage. And Gomer is the, the, the father of the Caucasian race, ladies and gentlemen. He is the father of the Caucasian race. And we see um, one of uh, uh, Noah's uh, Grandson's name was Ashkenaz. And these people are called Ashkenazis, ladies and gentlemen, because they are Europeans. They are Europeans. They are not Israelites. So um, one of Japheth's, amen, son's name was Ashkenaz. And this is where we get the Ashkenazi Jews, the European Jews, ladies and gentlemen. Most of those Jews... Uh, that was uh, 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 hauled in concentration camps and, and put in death camps, ladies and gentlemen, and w labor camps there and, uh, during the world during World War II, ladies and gentlemen. These people that were murdered in these uh, concentration camps, these death camps, they were gassed. Some of them was burnt in ovens. These people were not ladies and gentlemen, Israelites. They were Jews. They were Jews. Majority of these people were Jews. They were not Israelites. They were not descendants of ancient uh, Israelites of the Bible. They were not, ladies and gentlemen. They were Caucasian people. They are Gentile people, European people. And so we see these ignorant, ignorant, ladies and gentlemen, illiterate, uh, uh, Christians today sent it all this money to Israel because they think that they happen uh, fulfill biblical prophecy. The scripture does says that Yahweh is going to bring um, Israel back to their land. He will gather them back to their land in the latter days, ladies and gentlemen. But he didn't say he was going to gather the European Jews. He was going to gather the Israelites, amen, back to their land, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, when uh, you see these Jews migrating to the land of Israel today, that is not biblical prophecy being fulfilled. Many Christians 
blindly believe that it is biblical prophecy being fulfilled. Yahweh is gathering his people back to the land. Yahweh is not bringing those people back to Israel, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, the scripture says that Yahweh himself will bring them back. It would not be human intervention, ladies and gentlemen. They will not come on their own. Yahweh will bring them back, ladies and gentlemen, to that land. He will gather his people back to the land, ladies and gentlemen. But what you see Amen. Established over in Israel today, ladies and gentlemen, the Zionists established that. They established. Yahweh didn't accept, establish that. Those are not Yahweh's people. They have the whole world, ladies and gentlemen, bamboozo. They have the whole world, amen, deceived. These imposters are perpetrating a fraud. These are not Yahweh's people. But these, these ignorant, these ignorant and spiritually illiterate Christians that don't have any understanding, don't study the word of Yahweh and don't do any research, ladies and gentlemen, they have been duped to believe that these people are Yahweh's chosen people, but they are not Yahweh's chosen people, ladies and gentlemen, and they send millions tens of millions of dollars a year to these people to build settlements to help them in their migration coming back to the land of Israel. And they help them. Amen. These people build some of the most immaculate homes. They got swimming pools, ladies and gentlemen, in their yards. And uh, the white Evangelical Christians, majority of them are the ones that back them, that support them, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. They are supporting them. Glory to Yahweh. Listen, European Jews migrating to Israel and the Jewish state established is not the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. European Jews are not the true Israelites. They are the descendants of ancient Israel. They are not the descendants of ancient Israelites. Through Christians' ignorance and lack of knowledge of scripture and history, they are duped out of donating tens of millions of dollars a year to imposters and fake Israelites in Israel. Now, these, most of them white evangelical, fundamentalist Christians, are sending this money, ladies and gentlemen, to Israel. Now, do you know, right there in the United States, there are people living in abject poverty, homelessness is all over the U.S., and m most of the major cities, homelessness is everywhere. The U.S. is infested with homelessness. It's homeless people walking around everywhere. There's Poor people. There's people that 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 barely surviving, ladies and gentlemen, in the U.S. Why are these Christians sending their money to these Jews? Why there's pro social problems right there at home? There's problems in the ghettos, the slum. They can create jobs for people, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they can they can create jobs. They can help. Amen. The disenfranchised, ladies and gentlemen, but they're sending that money to help these Caucasians. It's nothing but white supremacy, ladies and gentlemen, because the blacks living in the U.S., they're poor, they don't have nothing, but they're the wrong color. And so these evangelical Christians, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these nationalists, these white supremacists, they're not happy. Amen. The citizens right at home in the U.S. But they're sending millions of dollars to these uh, European Jews. But we have problems in the U.S. There are problems in the U.S., ladies and gentlemen. There's abject poverty everywhere. Homelessness everywhere. There's people unemployed, ladies and gentlemen, that they can help. They can feed children that go to bed. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, hungry. They can help these widow women that can't even afford electricity on a fixed income, can't even put 
uh, heating their homes in the winter. They struggling, struggle putting, uh, 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 having electricity for their air conditioner, ladies and gentlemen. They can't even afford it. But these white evangelicals are sending this money all the way to Israel, helping these people, and they're not even Yahweh's true people, which they believe that they are, ladies and gentlemen, but right under their nose. And then there's, there's, there's poor, there's uh, impoverished white people. There's impoverished in the Appalachians, ladies and gentlemen, and the South. There's many impoverished white people. They can be helping these people. They can be helping these people, just like the U.S. The U.S. sending billions of dollars of aid, billions of dollars to, to Israel, the, ladies and gentlemen, build, for the, to build up their military hardware, ladies and gentlemen, to help them, amen, with their military. The U.S. is sending them billions of dollars a year, ladies and gentlemen. What if they would take some of that money and help their own home, ladies and gentlemen? But they're sending money out. But there's people in the U.S. need help. There's people in the U.S. cannot even pay their rent, like struggling to pay their rent. They can't buy a car. They can't, amen, even buy a used car, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. The U.S. has her priorities out of order, ladies and gentlemen. You send in billions of dollars to help Israel build up her military. Build up her military. And you got all these homeless people, my goodness, amen, in Philadelphia and Compton. In San Francisco, my goodness, my, they're at Los Angeles, they're everywhere, tent cities everywhere, but yet they send in their money to help Israel. They send in their money, and the Christians send in their money to Israel. Israel getting rich off of these foolish Christians. They getting rich, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. All they're doing is being used. They're being used. These Jews are using the U.S. They're using them. If you, amen, you know there's a saying in the world, you find a fool, use them. You find a fool, use them. And this is what they're doing. They're using them, taking them to the cleaners. I mean, taking them to the bank. They're laughing all the way to the bank. The money, ladies and gentlemen, that they're giving these fake Jews, these imposters, European Jews migrating to Israel and the Jewish state establishment is not the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. European Jews are not the true Israelites. They are not descendants of ancient Israelites. Through Christians' ignorance and lack of knowledge of scripture and history, they are duped out of donating tens of millions of dollars a year to imposters and fake Israelites in the land of Israel. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews say it gave nearly, listen to this, listen to this, $500 million to the Jewish agency over the course of a two decade long partnership with Axstein even sitting on the agency's executive board. Now, this is just one group. This is just one organization. There are hundreds of organizations in the U.S., ladies and gentlemen, that's sending money to Israel. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews raised $130 million a year. This is one organization a year, mostly from evangelical Christians. The organization received an estimate of $1.5 billion from evangelical Christians since 1983. When the Soviet Union began to collapse, allowing Jews by the early 1990s to leave in droves for Israel, the United States other countries and Christian leaders came to Rabbi Yeshiel Eckstein, the head of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, and asked him how 
they could help. Now, these Jews in Russia, now, if you ever seen these Jews in Russia, they pale white, blue eyes, pale white, look like they from Iceland or somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, they are pale, from a Scandinavian, Scandinavian country, country. They are pale white. You can see the veins in their face. Blue veins. You can see the veins, ladies and gentlemen. But they they supposed to be Jews. They supposed to be Jews. It's amazing. Amen. They supposed to be Jews. They look whiter than most white Europeans. You know, you know the, the ancient Israelites was people of color. My complexion are even darker. They, they, you, you go to Iraq, ladies and gentlemen, Saudi Arabia, and look at those people. In my complexion, some of them even darker. That's how the, uh, uh, the Israelites, the ancient Israelites look. How did they get so white? Huh? Just like Arafat said. Yezer Arafat said, before he died. He said, they left, amen, people of color, but they came back white. How did that happen? They left people of color, amen, but then they came back to the land, they was white, because they're not the people of that land, ladies and gentlemen. They are perpetrating a fraud. Yahushua said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation 3 and 9, he said it twice. They are the synagogue of Satan. They say that they are Jews, but they are not. But they are the synagogue of Satan. They say that they Israelites, but they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan, ladies and gentlemen. And so, Christian leaders and others, ladies and gentlemen, uh, even the, U, the U.S. government came to this man and asked him, how can we help you? And they gave him tens of millions of dollars in order to go and get those white Jews in Russia and bring them over to the land of Israel, ladies and gentlemen, by the droves. And they built settlements for these people on Palestinian land. So when the Soviet Union began to collapse, allowing Jews by the early 1990s to leave in droves for Israel, the United States, other countries, and Christian leaders came to Rabbi Yezio Eckstein, the head of International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, and asked him how they could help. This began the group's first major fundraising effort on wings of eagles. They called it the wings of eagles. Since the first plane load of Jews from the former Soviet Union arrived in Israel in 1992 under the auspice of the fellowship, the program has brought hundreds, listen, hundreds of thousands of Jews to Israel. Israeli nonprofits amass $36 billion in total income in 2015. $30 billion they amassed. $30 billion, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And total income in 2015. I can imagine what they're getting today. Roughly $45 billion in 2023 dollars from all sources. A large percent of that money is donated from Christians. Jonathan Felstein, an Israeli citizen, he serves as president of the Genesis 123 Foundation, an organization that builds relationship with Jews and Christians. He said Jews, listen what he said, listen to this, Jews must stop seeing Christian support for Israel as all about money. What he said, the Jews, all they see is dollar signs. When they see Christians, all they see is dollar signs. That's all they see. The only thing most Israelis have need for Christians is for their money. Former President Barack Obama's relationship with Israel was strained 
He called on Israel to stop expanding Jewish settlements in the West Bank, but he was ignored by Israel's government. Though, a, though Obama called on Israel to stop expanding Jewish settlements in the West Bank, support for the settlers remained strong among evangelical Christians. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The, what's the major cause of the conflict in Palestine today is the Jews building settlements there on Palestinian land, expanding settlement. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the corporate. But Israel don't care. They just keep building. Keep, they'll never have peace over there until the Antichrist come. They'll never be able to fix their problems, ladies and gentlemen, because, amen, they keep building settlements on uh, Palestinian land. How are you going to ever get peace? Huh? You're provoking these people. Huh? You're provoking them. And you will never get peace. Antagonists, ladies and gentlemen. How are you going to, amen, have peace over there and you steady building settlements on these people's land? But who's funding them? Who's funding these Jews to build a settlement? Evangel evangelical Christians. That's why Palestinians despise Christians. They look at them with disdain. That's why they despise Christians, ladies and gentlemen, because they see how the Christians is supporting this illegitimate state, this fraudulent state over there. They're funding. Amen. They're funding these Jews, amen, to build settlements. And this is why they hate the U.S. This is why they hate the Christians in the U.S. Thank Yahweh, I'm not a Christian. I'm a true believer. I'm not a Christian. I'm a true believer, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. The support for settlers remains strong among evangelical Christian groups across America. Evangelicals are raising millions of dollars for Jewish settlements. This is the main obstacle to peace between Israel and the Palestinians. On a recent afternoon in a Jewish settlement in the heart of the West Bank city, Hebron, a group of visiting American Christians displayed olive wood crosses. Listen to this. Several of the Christian visitors wore pins of interlocking Israeli and American flags. They said it is a sign of their commitment to the Jewish state. My goodness. My goodness. These Christians are duped. They think they're going to be blessed for helping these imposters. These fake Jews, these people, they ain't even true Jews. Ladies, Jew, true Israelites, these fake Israelites, rather. Ladies, they think they're going to be black. This is scripture they, they take, and they take it out of context, ladies and gentlemen. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12, let's look at it. Let's examine the book of Genesis, chapter number 12. And this is why they feel obligated, amen, to help, amen, these, um, these Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Genesis chapter 12, and look what it says here in verse number two. Yahweh speaking to Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So these stupid Christians, these idiots, they think that by helping these people, Yahweh going to bless them because Yahweh said, whoever bless you, Abraham, I'm going to bless them. Whoever curse you, Abraham, I'm going to curse you. And so they say the Palestinians curse. As I was teaching the other day, there's Palestinians that are true Israelites and don't even know it. True Israelites and don't even know it, ladies and gentlemen. They are true Israelites 
living in the Gaza, the West Bank. True Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. Let me move on. Let me move on. Israel can inflict the cruelest evils on the Palestinian people. But Christians will blindly embrace them. Recently, Christians have witnessed Israel's perpetration of crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing, genocide. For over a month, Israel have been bombarding Gaza with bombs around the clock. Bombs have failed on hospitals, mosques, schools, business, and homes, killing over 11,000 Palestinians, even though they have a four-day ceasefire right now. Palestinians, in including over 5,000 children, have been slaughtered. Many dead Palestinians still lay under rubble. The stench is unbearable. For several weeks, Palestinians have been cut off from water, food, fuel, electricity, medical aid, and sanitation. Clearly, we can see the war crimes. We can see that war crimes have been committed and the breaking of international laws. But fundamentalists, Christians, turn their head regardless of Israel's inhumane practices against the Palestinian people. Christians will give a closed eye, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump said that if he go out and shoot an innocent man in Manhattan, that Republicans will still follow him and he would not lose any of their support. That's what Donald Trump said. Christians, evangelicals, have this same attitude. Netanyahu and the Israeli government can commit any offense against the Palestinians, but the Christians will always support them. The scripture said, the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. The Israelis blind and these Christians today, both of them blind. And listen, these Christians will follow these Israelis, ladies and gentlemen, right in a ditch. Whatever, amen, these Israelis do, these Christians will support them. Oh, they're God's people. They're God's people. They're God's chosen people. That's, that, that's their land. That's not those Palestinians' land. God gave them that land, so they have a right to expand settlements. They have a right to use that land however they want. They have a right to, to demolish Pal Palestinians' homes. Bring in demolition crews and bulldozers and bulldozer their homes, ladies, because that's their land. They have a right to take those Palestinian olive groves and vineyards and their farms. They have a right because it's their land. So leave those people alone. That's how these Christians think, friend. That's their land. They, they have a right to bomb those Palestinians and kill all them babies and those women. They have a right. That's their land. They can do whatever they want to do because they entitled to that land because Yahweh gave it to them. Yahweh didn't give them that land. Yahweh did not give them that land. Ladies and gentlemen, regardless of Israel's inhumane practices against the Palestinian Christians will give a closed eye. They'll support them to the end. Christians support through tourism and donations bring millions of dollars in the state of Israel. While successive U.S. administrations have called 
Jewish settlements expansions, a stumbling block to peace in the region, the American government still allows U.S. citizens to directly fund them. Do you know why uh, Barack Obama didn't care about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu? You know why he, he really didn't really care for the man? It's because Obama knew what was going on, my friend. They was expanding settlements, building new settlements over there taking Palestinian lands. And Barack Obama said, y'all need to stop it. If we're going to get peace, how can we get peace if y'all keep stealing these people land? How can we get peace? And that's what that's why Barack Obama, when he got around uh, Netanyahu, he was nonchalant, ladies and gentlemen. He, he didn't really care for the man, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it. They, they get, didn't get along. Oh, but amen, when, when Donald Trump got in office, woo, everything changed. Donald Trump loved Israel. He loved them. Matter of fact, during his administration, they changed the, uh, the capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. Now the capital of Israel is in Jerusalem today. My goodness. Christian support through tourism and donations bring millions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, David Wilder, a spokesman for the Jewish settlers and Hebrew, says Christian financial support is important. He said there are many people who are not Jewish who very much love the state of Israel. They love the land of Israel. They understand the necessity for the Jews to be here. And they express that love in different ways. One of those is financially. Ladies, they're getting rich from these evangelical Christians. I wish these evangelical Christians would help the people that really need help, ladies and gentlemen. Israel already is a rich state. Amen. Glory to Yahweh. What about, amen, the unemployed in, in the major cities in the U.S.? What about the homeless? What about these people that's living in abject poverty? What about these children go to bed hungry? Ladies and gentlemen, they turn their back on them. Turn their back on them, but they send all that money over to, to Israel. First of all, the European Jews are not Yahweh's chosen people. They are not descendants of ancient Israelites. They should not be in the land of Israel. They are not entitled to that land. Yahweh did not give them that land. They are not Israelites, but they are European Gentiles. There is grassroots support from fundamentalist Christians, much of the financial support for Jewish settlers in the West Bank comes from Christians who believe in the biblical prophecies that Jews will inherit the land of Israel. They believe that a thriving state of Israel is a sign for an apocalyptic end time and the return of the Messiah to the earth, which they call him Jesus. His true name is Yahushua. Often led by the charismatic leaders of mega churches in the U.S., these grassroots groups across the U.S. raise millions of dollars each year. Ladies and gentlemen, more than, let me stop here. What's the fat guy in Texas, John Hagee? He's disgusting. That's a disgusting man. He, he gets up and he rant, ladies and gentlemen, about how much we should support Israel and support them financially, get behind their God's people. He loves Israel, ladies and gentlemen. He loves them.
He's obsessed with those people. And they're not even Yahweh's people. Educated man. I'm sure he'd been to seminary, cemetery, ladies and gentlemen. Very brilliant man. But he is, ladies and gentlemen, he is in error. He's an educated fool. But he's trying to rally these Christians to get behind Amen, Israel, and send money and send support. You'll be amazed of the money that they sent to Israel after October the 7th when Hamas came in there and, and, and attacked these people, uh, killed, murdered over 1,300 Israelis, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, support came from the U.S. to help the families of these people. These people rich now, oh, reparations. You know, the black people in the U.S. never got reparations, never got nothing. Didn't even get 40 acres in a mule. But boy, they stand behind whites. White people stand behind white people. Black people, oh my God, we get the bad end of the stick, don't we? They treat us so bad because you know white supremacists and you know the US is a white supremacist state and you know that uh, UK, France all these European powers they're white supremacists they care nothing about black people that's why they turn black people away at their borders immigrants, black immigrants fleeing from persecution and war, they send them away they don't want no black blackies in their country they don't want no black folk in their country this is a, a white only country, ladies and gentlemen. You know how it is. You know how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. I guarantee if if the Israelites, ladies and gentlemen, was jet black, the people in that land were jet black, I bet you they wouldn't be getting no money from these evangelical Christians. They'll be saying, no man, those imposters, those imposters. <laughs> they were if they were people of color, if they were people of color, you think they you think them evangelicals would be sending them money? No way. <laughs> They'll be saying, no, they perpetrating a fraud. Those imposters. That's what John Hickey and the rest of these mega uh uh preacher mega church preachers be teaching, ladies and gentlemen. But because they white people, they Yahweh's people see. My goodness, my goodness. 270,000 Jewish settlers are estimated to be living on West Bank, in the West Bank, Palestinian territory, stole by Israel in 1967. They stole the land in 1967. 1967 war, they stole the land. So 270,000 Jewish settlers are estimated to be living on West Bank, Palestinian territory, stole by Israel in 1967. They claim they have right to be on the land. Christians also believe that the land of Israel, European Jews have the right to be on the land. They entitled to the land. That's what evangelical Christians believe. They believe they are entitled to the land, especially the white ones, especially the white ones, ladies and gentlemen. They gone home, ladies and gentlemen. Palestinians consider the West Bank part of a future Palestinian state. That's how the Palestinians view it. And here come these Johnny come lately. Amen. Come and just took these people's land. More than half of the Jewish settlements in the West Bank received direct or indirect funding from Christian communities. Donors can choose among several programs, including one called Adopt a Jewish Settler, and which money goes toward the daily needs of the Jewish settlers. Colonists. That's what they are. They're colonists, ladies and gentlemen. Happen build new schools, health facilities, and synagogues. These Jewish settlers say that Messiah Yahoshua was 
a bastard. Now I'm gonna stop there. These same people, they send in, these Christians sending all this money to. Now let me say this. They building school facilities. These evangelical Christians sending money to these Jews where they can build school facilities. These rundown schools in the U.S. Ladies and gentlemen, and paying the teachers peanuts. That's why you can't even keep teachers and the schools run down. Why can't these evangelical Christians send money to build up the school system in the U.S. rather than sending money to build up the school system there in Israel? Come on, my goodness. It's pitiful. But you know, most of the white people in the U.S., their children go to private schools. Their children go to the best schools, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, they don't let them go to the schools in the slums and the hood. Mm, they send their children to the best schools. They, and it's, it's, it's pitiful what they pay the school teachers in the U.S. Some of the school teachers don't make but thirty thousand a year, twenty five thousand. How you, you who can you go four years, get a degree, and get thirty thousand from these rebellious, wicked children, demon possessed, reprobate children? These hellish children, their parents don't raise them, to, and they come to school, they don't have no manners, they out of control. And you got to deal with all that foolishness, then you got to teach them. You got to deal with all their demons, all their spirits, all their wicked ways, ladies and gentlemen. And these students jumping on teachers, jumping on the teachers, beating them up. My goodness. So more than half of the Jewish settlements in the West Bank receive direct or indirect funding from Christian communities. Donors can choose among several programs, including one called Adopt a Settler, and which money goes towards the daily needs of Jewish settlers, helping build new schools, health facilities, and synagogues. These Jewish settlers say that the Messiah Yahoshua that we serve, not Jesus, but Yahoshua, they call this Christians call him Jesus, but Yahoshua that we serve, they say he's a bastard. They say he was a bastard. These same people, these stupid idiots, these idiots, these these evangelicals sending money to. Call the one they say they serve. Call him a bastard. Now, how can you be partaker of that wickedness? How can you be partaker of that wickedness? Building them synagogues that they teach this in their synagogues. Send them money to build them synagogues, which in turn, in, in, in return, they teach this blasphemy in their synagogues. They teach that Yahoshua was a bastard. His mother, Mary, was a whore. And Yahoshua's father was a Roman soldier. But they pumping money to these people. Would you pump money to these blasphemers? Would you pump money to these blasphemers? Would you support these blasphemers? They believe Yahoshua was a magician that used sorcery and witchcraft to perform his miracles. That's what they teach their children. This is what they teach their children. Those Christians, don't, they, they worship a false god. Those Christians don't. Their Messiah was no good. He was wicked. They say he, he was a magician. He used sorcery and witchcraft to do his miracles, which he learned in Egypt. They say in the scripture where you don't see him, it, it doesn't mention him after he was 12 till he was 30 again. During that time, those 18 years, they say he was down in Egypt. He was in Egypt learning sorcery and witchcraft, how to do fake miracles. They also say that Yahoshua will burn in hell and human excrement. But you support it now. How can these Christians support these devils? They are antichrist and blasphemers. How can they support them? 
Let me read the scripture. I don't know. See, these, they, these Christians don't read the Bibles. But let me read this in 1 John chapter 2. Look what it says here. In 1 John chapter 2. 1 John 2 verse 22. Look what it says. Who is a liar? But he that deny Yahushua is the Messiah. These Jews say that they are Jews, but they are not, but they the synagogue of Satan. Huh? They liars. Just like they father. They liars. Who is a liar? But he that deny that Yahushua is the Messiah. He is Antichrist or anti Mashiach that denied the Father and the Son. Hmm? Whosoever denies the Son, the same have not the Father. But he that acknowledge the Son have the Father also. They deny the Son. They don't acknowledge the Son. They antichrist. Those Jews are antichrist. The state of Israel is an antichrist state. It's an antichrist state. The Palestinians in, in Hebron say that they are outraged by the financial support these American Christian groups give to Jewish settlers. I don't blame them for being outraged. I'd be outraged too, ladies and gentlemen, because 650 Jewish settlers live in the heart of Hebron, which is Palestinian land. Israel has erected checkpoints and closed off roads to the thousands of Palestinians. Even Muslims believe in Yahushua, which the Jews don't. Even Muslims believe in Yahushua. They don't believe he died on the cross, but they believe in him. But these Jews, they don't even believe in him. They say that his mother was a whore. Say Mary was a whore. She slept around with Roman soldiers. She committed adultery on her husband, Joseph. And she had Yahoshua out of wedlock. And Yahoshua is illegitimate. He's a bastard. That's what they teach. They teach that he was a witch, a sorcerer. Huh? He used magic mm -hmm, to do his miracles. He learned it down there in Egypt. He learned it from the Egyptian priests. But you support these people. You send them money. These people are antichrist. I just read it to you. They antichrist. My goodness. Then persecution of Christian tourists is on the rise. Have y'all been reading the headlines? Have y'all been looking in the headlines? Have y'all seen what they was doing to Christians before October the 7th? They was coming visiting uh, holy sites there in Jerusalem. They went to the Western Wall. Guess what? Huh? These Jews were spitting on them and chanting, death to Christians, death to Arabs, death to Christians. But they sending their money to these people. These Jews just using these Christians, taking them to the bank. <laughs> Cleaning them out, taking all their money from them. And these Christians support them. They get their biggest backing and support from evangelical Christians. Persecution of Christian tourists is on the rise. Jews spit on them. Even the ones living in Bethlehem, Nazareth, Jerusalem, they spit on them. You can imagine what they do to the Palestinian Christians. And they chant, death to Christians, death to Christians, death to Muslims, death to Arabs. But they take the Christian money, don't they? They take that money, don't they? They take them donations. Listen to this. They even desecrate graves of Christians in Israel. Christians that was buried in Israel, they go in and desecrating the graves taking the headstones and throwing them down. Throwing the headstones down. Ladies and gentlemen, urinating on the grave sites. And you're going to send your money to these, these devils? 
this synagogue, this synagogue of Satan, these imposters, these fake Israelites, you're going to send your money to these people that hate Yahweh, that hate his son, Yahushua, say that, yeah, he exists, but he wasn't, a, he wasn't our Messiah. He was y'all Christian's Messiah. He was a witch doctor. He was a magician. He worked in magic. And Joseph wasn't his daddy. No, Joseph really wasn't his daddy because the Yahweh was his daddy. Joseph was his stepdaddy. They say Mary was a whore. She was a prostitute. She slept around with Roman soldiers. And this is how she got Yahushua out of wedlock. And they said that he's going to burn in human excrement in hell. Yahushua going to burn in human excrement, feces, in hell. Now, this is how these people think of Yahushua, the one we serve. But you're going to support these people. Well, I see my time has got away, and we're going to close. Thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us. If you will, we would like you to subscribe and share and like. We would really appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe. Our YouTube friends, if you can do that, we will really appreciate you. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers.